Jane was a little worried about her brother. About four years after Paul moved to Kirkland, Jane sent him a letter. She told him an ex-boyfriend she was still friends with lived in a group household in Oakport. There was a room available, and Josiah and Jane would help him move. She felt Oakport was just the kind of place that a slight misfit like Paul might find others he could relate to. She urged him to take the opportunity. For Paul, it was a miracle. He wanted to leave Kirkland for a while, but did not know where to go. That his sister cared about him also touched him. He had felt estranged from his family. He was very glad to have the opportunity to be helped along what he had found the difficult path. He had no choice but to drop out of college. That he had fallen so far down the levels of life in society meant something was more broken than he could understand. Hopefully, life would be better in Oakport. There were many different group households in Oakport with various levels of cooperation. In Paul's household, they did not plan meals together. Sometimes, spontaneously, food was shared. Often, it was not. And mostly, the young men ate at various places in town, for there were a lot of low-priced eating opportunities. Burritos, pizza, burgers, soup, etc. Oakport was like a college town without the college. And the population was mostly older than college students. But most of the young people knew of Oakport when they were in college. And for a couple decades, Oakport was almost an alternative to either starting a career or going to graduate school. Paul was grateful to be there. Over the years, his jobs in food service changed so that eventually he became a cook, which gave him satisfaction and resolved the humiliation he had felt about his work for almost a decade. But he was still a failure as far as romantic relationship, but he had never had much hope about that. Over the one and a half decades he spent in Oakport, Paul developed some friendships. The key friend he had was Mary Coultier, who he had had unrequited love for, but that made him an especially devoted friend, who Mary valued. She had an abundance of young men who desired a romantic relationship with her, so if a boyfriend was causing her distress, she did not put up with it for long. Her relationships could last from three months to two years until something broke in her after she broke up with Mark. It was then that she gave up hope. She realized it was never going to work out with anyone. She realized the same general pattern repeated itself. She was happy with someone, sometimes in love, sometimes ecstatic. Then the relationship would change. There was irritation or boredom or conflict. There was a breakup where there was hurt or guilt or anger. Something was wrong with her or with the game of love. Very wrong. The time after the breakup with Mark, Mary entered a long depression. Paul had already left Oakport. He went back to Kirkland and got a job as a cook in Lucky's Diner. Paul had become stronger in his capacity to tolerate and even enjoy relative isolation. He was willing to give up his few friends in Oakport, mostly because he felt they could not know who he was. He only engaged part of his mind with his friends. He was limited to what they were interested in, 
or how they understood reality. It seemed to him that if he ventured a thought outside of their field of awareness, he would be ignored or sometimes ridiculed. His hurt made him cautious in conversation, but there was a background resentment that was relieved when he was alone. His relationship with Mary was especially inwardly emotionally volatile, and recurring grief drove him into contemplation and prayer. When Mary became hopeless about her love life, which was thus being hopeless about life, she in chronic grief, which her friends assumed was about missing Mark. She must have really loved him. But Mary did not talk. Not only was she depressed and withdrawn, but she knew her friends would not understand her plight, her disillusionment with love itself. This would make no sense to them. Love and hope for love was a religion belief that the key to happiness was romantic love. That belief was self-evidently true. Mary was finding herself in exile from that community of belief, which intertwined with all informal conversation among friends and much of culture. Thus, she was alone. And not just because she had no boyfriend, but because she no longer believed in romantic relationships. So she had to start looking for other alternatives for belief. But for a long while, she was just suffering the collapse of what much of her life was about. The old wisdom church did not hold worship services. The minister did not give a talk on spiritual life. There was no congregation. Originally an abandoned Catholic church, it was sold to George Peterson, who was an heir to a family fortune, and restored in a very large, and excuse me, and resided in a very large house on a large plot of land at the north end of Bay Road in Oakport. He spent millions of dollars in eight years on renovations and new additions to the church building, which was on Main Street. The interior space was divided into four chapels, and four more were built, all interconnected with corridors. George had spent many years traveling in Europe, and he especially valued the many churches and chapels that were open to visitors. But he was more than a tourist in admiration of art and architecture. He spent an hour or two in prayer or contemplation. His spiritual awareness opened and developed in Europe, and he wanted to give that opportunity to others in Oakport. Each chapel was different in aesthetic and imagery. Paul spent a lot of time in the chapels of the Old Wisdom Church. It was there that he found calm to dissipate the turmoil of his emotional mind. The first few years in Oakport were wonderful, he enjoyed meeting and talking to people in the cafes. He was on good terms with his housemates and a couple he considered friends. But slowly over the years, friendliness and friendships decreased. There was a distance with most people.
after years, he realized alienation had returned. Not as intense as it was in Kirkland, and often it was subtle. Unbridled enthusiasm for Oakport dissipated. He now thought that was naive, but he mostly did not voice that, and he did not know to what extent his alienation was his fault. But he could escape Oakport by going to the Old Wisdom Church. The church was and was a gateway to an alternate reality. But he was convinced the spiritual realm was causal, that spiritual experience was not just an internal aspect of personal mind, that unknown God and spirit exists. After Paul left Oakport and Mary entered into her existential crisis, Mary started to visit the Old Wisdom Church and spent more and more time there. Slowly she was gaining an easing of her emotional turmoil and gaining insights. The Old Wisdom Church also had a library. There were a dozen comfortable reading nooks and Mary spent a lot of time in the library reading. After several years, Mary became enlightened. It is a rare gift given to a few spiritual seekers who have the destiny to be guide to others. For a while, she performed that role informally, usually at cafes where someone who was inspired to could ask to sit down at her table and talk to her. For although she had great compassion, normally for some reason people experienced some intimidation in her presence. That was the unconscious knowledge that she could discern their false self. Eventually, the New World Church in Oakport hired Mary to be a spiritual teacher. Thus, the prerequisite to being at her seminar was the capacity to recognize one's false self. This was not a conceptual understanding. Many people had that, and there was no shortage of spiritual material explaining it. Participants had to have gained enough personal insight so that they were able to actually have their self disintegrate and gain integration into alternative personal awareness within spiritual community that Mary was already part of and was an instrument of developing within this realm of human community. In other words, community in the spiritual reality can grow as human community. This is the basic dynamic of formation and growth of all diverse spiritual and religious communities and societies in human history. The spiritual community that became New Oakport started there.